Hello and welcome to another episode of Invad Entry. My name is James Turner. Today we're going to be looking at uh, Diffie Hellman exchanges, which is a part of the cryptography world. It is a way of transferring a secret between two places under certain conditions, and those conditions are that there may be listeners who cannot uh, manipulate or transform. So uh, generally, when talking in crypto world, we generally have Alice. And we have Bob on the other side. And Alice and Bob are our primary uh, pair of people. When it comes to crypto puzzles, we have Alice and Bob. I know there's an XKCD cartoon here somewhere. And Alice is going to send messages to Bob, and Bob is able to send messages back to Alice. Uh, there is usually uh, a listener in the middle, and for some unknown reason, it's Eve. I don't know why it's not Charlie. Uh, who's, who's see it's always Eve Eve is able to observe these messages there is an eye and so she, they can see what is going on but they can't manipulate it and that is in comparison to other attacks uh, where actually Alice can be in, the messages can be intercepted and then uh, either a new message created or, or whatever so uh, in this situation this is very much like a place where they may be publishing the information in a public place. So you might you know, publish it on a website or you might publish it on a newspaper, for example. Everyone can read the newspaper, uh, but it's harder to manipulate the things in the newspaper. Or you might do something like radio, where Alice can be transmitting a radio signal and lots of people will be able to receive that radio signal. But it's very hard to actually absorb the radio completely and retransmit. There are techniques to do that. Uh, but they can often be detected because it's very hard to absorb fully the first radio signal. It's much easier to block a radio signal than it is actually to absorb it and retransmit a different radio signal. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is a situation when we're saying that Alice is able to talk to Bob and Bob is able to talk to Alice with some level of certainty. And they want to set up cryptography. They want to set up so they can send other messages uh, where the contents of the messages cannot be understood. And they're going to use an algorithm called Diffie-Hellman. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Um, and to do that, what I've got here today set up is I've set up two Raspberry, uh, two Raspberry Pi, two Jupyter notebooks, and I'm going to do the algorithm. And at the top of the screen, you can see Alice, and the bottom of the screen, you can see Bob. And what we're going to do is I'm going to only transfer from notebook to notebook um, a, a couple of numbers. Um, and to be precise, Diffie Hellman is good at transferring numbers. Uh, a secret number will appear on both Alice and Bob roughly the same time that someone only receiving the numbers that were transferred um, would not be able to to understand. Um, so to do this we're going to need math um, uh, because uh, everyone needs math. So math is imported um, and what we're going to do first of all is before we start, Alice and Bob have to agree two numbers, and these numbers are quite important. We call them uh, G and P, but I'm going to give them modulus P, um, and I'm going to use 107. And you're going to have base uh, G, it's going to be 5. So G is the base, P is the modulus, and what they do beforehand is they agree these. Now, these numbers actually are important that there's a relationship between them, or to be precise, that there isn't a relationship between them. You can't just pick any two numbers here. Um, but the idea is beforehand they agree that. And they, again, that may be published, maybe it's published in a book, maybe it's published in a, a newspaper saying, hey, when we talk, we're going to use these two as our base numbers for the maths. Um, ha! I said base number one's a base. Uh, base, uh, when you're doing maths, is, is the, the base you could do. And the modulus is what we're going to do the modular arithmetic by. So one of the big areas of cryptography is this kind of idea of what we call clock mathematics, where the idea is what do you get if you add 2 to 11, so you've got 13, where well, you, you get 1. Because on a clock, when you go past uh, 12 o'clock, it goes back to 1, and that's what modulus is doing. It's giving the remainder of a division. Right, it's a bit like going around a clock. And it was discovered quite a long time ago now that when you uh, use powers, when numbers have a relationship, you can go around the clock multiple times, and then you can, uh, if there's a pair of numbers, you can then use the other number to go around and it takes you back to the first number. So you're not undoing, a lot of times when you're doing uh, algorithms like 
the opposite of addition is subtraction. With this, it's not. The opposite is to go forwards again. Or rather, it's easier to go forwards than it is to go backwards. Um, and that, that's, the fun, that's the fundamental of quite a lot of these crypto. That, this idea of modulus arithmetic has gone out of the way a little bit in, in, in more interest, things like um, um, elliptic curves, and then more recently, this idea of post-quantum cryptography, because some of these things are very difficult if you have a traditional computer, or if you have an abacus, or if you have a mechanical computer. But there's an idea that these things could be cracked much faster as a quantum computer. Um, but yeah, but we're going to crack on with the actual maths here and, and actually show this. So the first thing Alice does, Alice is going to pick a secret. Um, and, and we're going to call it A. And she's going to pick for seven. Um, it doesn't matter what she picks. It has to be below the uh, modulus. Oh, uh, does it? I don't know. Anyway, she's going to send to Bob. She's going to send um, math.pal base G Alice secret A for this. But she's going to send modulus B. Now that modulus, make sure I spell right, is the first number. And that's going to come out actually in here as a float. Um, print to Bob yeah, as 15. And if we really want to do it, we'll put an int around it. It will always be an int integer. Uh, because uh, if you pick integers up here, which you should do for this, um, it will come out with an integer. Um, it's interesting. It will work if it doesn't. So 15. So we're going to say from Alice equals 50. That is the first bit of information we're going to transfer. Bob is going to pick a secret now. So Bob secret. Bob secret. And Bob is going to use, we, call, we could call it B. Then he's going to pick three as, as Bob's number. And Bob is going to do exactly the same. So they're going to do to Alice. It's going to be, it's going to be the int of math.pal base G uh, Bob secret B uh, percentage, oops, percentage uh, modulus B. And I didn't print that. And he gets she, she, he gets number eighteen, so he's going to send to her eighteen. Um, at this point in time, because he has the value from Alice, okay, fifteen, he can now actually calculate the secret. So the secret s is equal to the int of math dot pal um, from Alice Bob secret B percentage modulus B print S and there you get the secret 58 here we transferred this secret to Alice so from Bob it's going to be uh, 18 that value there has been sent up to Alice and they're going to do exactly the same thing but here when they do this they're going to say it's going to be from from Bob, it's going to be Alice Secret A. It's going to be print S. And if I've done this right, they get the value of 58. They both have the same number now. Now, <laughs> that's it. That that that's basically um, the, all they have to do for Diffie Hellman. Some caveats to this: don't implement this yourself. If you're going to implement Diffie-Hellman, uh, use a library or use something like TLS, which already has Diffie-Hellman and, and better versions of Diffie-Hellman, which use public and private keys and all kinds of things to then validate that these messages haven't been tampered with. Um, fundamentally, this is only good for transferring a single number. Now, not a single digit number, but a single number. So you should never use a modulus this small. You should be using moduluses in the, you know, very large moduluses. The base G, I believe, has to be co-prime. I think it's got co-prime where where it can't be a uh, common. They can't have common dividers of of P. Um, otherwise, you can have other solutions which will uh, give uh, the same secret. Um, so that's very important. These numbers aren't just plucked out of thin air. They actually have to be picked. Um, and there's ways of picking those numbers. There are optimizations made by mathematicians that allow you to pick these numbers, very large numbers which have the correct relationships. Uh, this number can be completely random at this point, and 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 the sorry, the Bob secret and the Alice secret can be random. 
it should be noted that all if someone was listening, all they would have is P and G and A and B. Um, there is a relationship now between S, A and B, um, which you can work out. Um, and I believe if, if you look at the Wikipedia page, here's the secrecy chart for it, so you can see, go, Alice knows P, G um, and A, because that's Alice's secret. Bob knows P, G and B. And then you can sort of work through and they get to the same number. Now, what's interesting here is that um, it says that it's not helpful for Eve to compute AB, which equals G to the AB. Now, it's actually AB mod P equals G to the AB mod P. Uh, those things are important. Um, given that, you could actually brute force A and B. But if the numbers were large enough, you actually get multiple answers. So if you were to try and do that, even for these small numbers, um, so we're going on the bottom here, if we have um, P, G, do, 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 do. In fact, if I open up my huh, my test notebook, well, I prepped all this in advance. Look at this organization. Um, this is for one of the values before I, I, I sort of did the calculation before. So I go for a particular answer here. I'm looking for ones which meet um, uh, a particular value. And the, the value here was nine for me. And I found I had this many answers for quite small no values of of the modulus, modulus say 23 at this point, so I only had to count up to 23 to do my maths. But the reality is those numbers could be much, much larger. And therefore the attack space becomes exponentially larger, uh, and the number of possible answers become larger and larger and so on. This in itself isn't enough to transfer a key. Keys want to be like 32 bytes, so you generally will use this number or this secret to then derive a key. Um, or use this to start a translation when you start building more security or more layers of cryptography on the back of it. And that's it for today, though. It's a very quick video about uh, Diffie-Hellman. Short to show this is this is the, all the maths underlying it. It is it is relatively simple to understand Diffie-Hellman. Um, if you're using a library that does it already, it's great. If you're using a, so even a predefined algorithm, you've got to be really careful when you're implementing um, security because it's not just about a matter of implementing the cryptographic fundamentals. It's about how you use those fundamentals. So if you have a um, sort of developed a secret and then you have a known plain text, or if your secret isn't big enough, you can then open yourself to other sorts of cryptographic attacks or cryptanalysis um, will work against your cryptography. Um, but as a principle, I think it's one where people should know what is Diffie-Hellman, when it is useful, and that Diffie-Hellman is a way of transferring a secret, or generating a, not even transferring, generating a secret on both sides. So if you already have a secret, you can't use Diffie-Hellman to transfer it, but you can use Diffie-Hellman to generate a secret on both sides that you can encrypt to transfer your secret. Um, so it generates a secret on both sides, and it only works where there cannot be a man in the middle, i.e. if you've got a communication channel which you trust, um, or is, is has a high confidence level that a message is passed without it being manipulated on the way. Diffie Hellman these days is not fantastic useful except in a few situations such as radio and newspapers um, but it is more useful uh, when in conjunction with things like um, I say public key cryptography and other systems which allow you to add more confidence. So it's a fundamental method which has evolved over the years to be much more advanced than, than this simple one. Um, yeah, that's it. If you're enjoying these, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode.